All right, fellow scientists, welcome. So we are starting chapter 12 in our book, which is all about DNA. And to begin, um, I'd like to take a historical look at DNA because it seems kind of weird to us, but we didn't always know that DNA was the molecule that we used for heredity. It wasn't the molecule that was passed from generation to generation and determine our traits. So I want to look at a couple experiments, um, starting with this experiment by Frederick Griffith that helped us to prove that DNA was the genetic material. So I'm going to use this chart right here, which isn't from your book. It's from the book that we use for AP Biology, Life, the Science of Biology, 8th edition. So it's a, it's a really good book, um, really good chart. So we'll start by saying that Frederick Griffith was working with pneumonia, um, or the bacteria rather, that causes pneumonia. And uh, in his work, he was trying to figure out ways to cure pneumonia, to stop pneumonia from spreading. Um, and so in his work, he found that there were two strains of this same bacteria that caused pneumonia. There was what he called an S strain, because in a petri dish under a microscope, it looked smooth. So we'll go ahead and label that smooth. And he found that when he injected the smooth strain of this bacteria that causes pneumonia into the mouse, the mouse dies, unfortunately. He found another strain, same bacteria, but different strain, different type, not a different species, but um, like a, oh, the difference between a black lab and a poodle, right? Same species, but different, different types, different strains. So he found a different strain that he called his R strain, and that's because in a petri dish or underneath a microscope, it looked rough. So when he injected this rough bacteria, again, same bacteria as the S strain, when he injected this rough bacteria into the mouse, the mouse lived. Yay, mouse, right? So there was a difference between these two, and this one wasn't really anything to worry about because the immune system of the mouse or the human could fight it off. This one was the one that he wanted to, that he wanted to figure out how he could stop, how he could cure. So he took this group of cells, this living S strain, and he boiled them, right? And we all know that boiling is a good way to sanitize water if we're ever without a source of clean water, say backpacking or camping or something like that. Um, boiling is one way to, to sanitize it because boiling will denature the proteins. Denature is just a fancy way to say that it'll change the shape of the proteins and it lyses the cells. Lysing is just a fancy way to say that the cells explode, right? So they're, so they're no longer full intact cells. So he boiled this liquid and which denatured the proteins and lysed the cells. And he put that into a syringe and injected the mouse with that syringe. And lo and behold, as we would expect, the mouse was healthy. The mouse didn't die. Then this is the interesting part. And this is not what he expected. This is not what he was, what he was trying to find out. But he took this rough bacteria, which doesn't cause the mouse to die. And he took this heat killed smooth bacteria, which again doesn't cause the mouse to die, and he mixed them together, injected that mixture into the mouse, and lo and behold, unfortunately, the mouse dies. He's like, huh, that's interesting. So his hypothesis was there's some kind of, and it says down here, some kind of chemical substance. He called it his transforming factor. There's some kind of chemical substance, some transforming factor that isn't alive, because if it were alive, the boiling would have killed it. Right? There's some kind of substance that isn't alive that takes rough bacteria and transforms them into smooth bacteria. And so now the race was on to find out the identity of that transforming substance, which we'll talk about in our next video.